What's going on, guys? How's it going? This is Marshall Dice Knows Adam Campbell, and this is Dice Squad here live at Origins Game Fair 2015 with Mike Watson. Mike Watson of what? Freestyle Comics and The Stuff. The Stuff. All right. And what do you have here today? Uh, I got a lot. I mean, first off, I'd like to say I'm only here now because of my sponsors, Heroes and Games, and they're located in the Convention Center in downtown Columbus, Ohio. Alrighty. But uh, I am displaying, uh, promoting my card game, Epic 21. It is blackjack with superpowers. What what could you ask for more? Gambling and superheroes. Tony Stark does that all the time. Exactly. That's where I kind of got the idea. Um, the base deck is 132 cards. Um, all the artwork and cards are based off of comic books that I published through Freestyle Comics. Um, we have 190 co total cards going on. Our starter decks are 132 or 74, depending on your flavor. But it's and it can also be used to teach kids math. And uh, blackjack, learning, gambling, superheroes—it's all that in a bag of chips. I love chips. So, <laughs> well, how do you play this game? Uh, uh, pretty simple. You start off with two cards. Uh, you add up your score in the top right hand corner and then at the bottom of your card you can have some type of power. It can be an attack, it can be a defense, or maybe a power up. It's going to be up to you to figure out how do you want to play and guess which one's going to help you win. Once you figure that out, you pick your one card and you say, I have my battle card. Place that one down. Keeps you and me honest so we know what card it is. And then at that point, your objective is to get to 21 points without your opponent getting to 21. Alright. So you can ask for up to two more cards onto your deck but that's it so you get a total of four cards so you got to make it happen with those four cards once you have your cards you say hey i'm going to stay or i need a couple more cards you say all right it's battle time you reveal your card and it's pretty much up in the air at that point whether that person has a defense or that person has a high attack um, and whatever's left after you get your scores together is the winner of the game and you're still creating cards for this. As, as, I, saw, as I saw earlier uh, yesterday, you have uh, Naruto and Goku, aside from Marvel and DC, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm a huge Naruto fan, and I kind of treat it like commissions at conventions. Um, so I add about 10 to 12 new cards to the deck um, every month from, uh, I guess you'd say, fan uh, asking. And every time a new issue of Hot Shot comes out or Vigilance, well, I add 40 to 45 cards to the deck as an expansion. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now, Hot Shot, what is, what is Hot, this is your comic? Yes. So how did this start, Hot Shot? Oh, uh, she started down a long, long road. Uh, I started in high school in 1999, just me and my friends just messing around. And uh, then I got to college, and I was kind of like Gollum and his one ring. I had this notebook and sketchbook, and I wouldn't let anybody see it. Like, if they looked at it, I'd be over their shoulder like, yeah, uh-huh, now give it back. <laughs> uh, um, um, then uh, <clears throat> I met Victor Dandridge, uh, who's also from Columbus, Ohio. And uh, who, who, for our viewers who don't know, does know who that is? Who is that? Uh, he ends up he ends up being like a brother to me and my best friend. Uh, we went to college together, and he is over uh, Vantage In House Productions. All right, all right. Uh, well, he really liked Hot Shot. He thought it was good, and uh, he would probably be the first person to give me a bit of real talk, and said the writing is terrible. <laughs> and uh, so he ended up putting together, uh, I, I crap you not, a book this thick of how to write, but he broke down all my issues of Hot Shot in that. It was like an English book. All right. And so I'm like, oh, dude, that's great. I, I really appreciate it. So I'm reading through it, and I take none of the educational value from it at all. All I see is this dude can write, and this story he wrote is amazing. He's the writer of Hot Shot. All right. So, Victor and I always joke, and I'm like, dude, that was that was really your application to write the book. So I I, I don't want to hear any of this like trying to make me better crap. You really want to write the book, and that was your pitch. But he really was trying to help me write better. Um, but so he wrote the first seven issues of Hot Shot. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, seven issues. Um, but he has moved on to other things. He started his own comic book company uh, called Vantage In House, and he does a bunch of things in the schools and things like that. Hopefully, we will come back around and find another project where we can work on. But Kerry Kelly has taken over the writing duties for Hot Shot. Uh, my team right now is composed of Gary Mitchell, he's the inker, uh, Veronica Smith, and she is on the colors of the book. Uh, we're doing issue seven, which is technically issue eight, comes out, uh, I'm going for August, uh, and that features a crossover with Dinah Girl from Red Hand Studios. Very nice, very nice. Well, and so Hot Shot, what is your superpower? 
uh, he doesn't know all of his superpowers. So this is kind of thing, but a, this, it, a cataclysmic event happened in 1999. Oh, awesome. It's called the Zero Event. And that's where the superhuman population of our planet pretty much went down to zero. The very next day, Mike, who is the star of the book, wakes up with superpowers. He's floating on his ceiling, has no idea where they came from, has no idea what he can do, and he's on a journey to go to college in a week. So during that time span of him going down there and getting acclimated to Columbus, Ohio, because that's where it takes place, he decides, I'm going to fill the void. I'm going to be a superhero. And uh, without extra humans being in the area to like, you know, take him under their wing and teach him and stuff, he had to figure out a lot of stuff on his own, and he doesn't really know everything they do. <coughs> Excuse me. But right now he has flight, uh, he knows he can take a punch, super strength, and he has a heat blast. Very nice, very nice. Now, you you also have a podcast, right? The Stuff? Yes. What is The Stuff about? The Stuff is about the stuff you love to talk about. We talk about everything in geek culture, uh, anything in pop culture, movies, video games, TV, comic books, cartoons. If it's, if it's geeky, we talk about it. Uh, we're very passionate about it. We get into arguments all the time about things. We like like, like who's, which is better, Star Trek or Star Wars? No, our arguments go deeper than that. All right. Uh, on our latest episode, we actually got into a big discussion about Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is an amazing game, and I've been playing it every day, and I just realized it's amazing, but there are no one, there's no one of color in that game at all, in the entire game. I don't own the game, so I'll have to look to pick it up and take a look yeah. at it. Well, it's something that somebody pointed out in a game review of it, and I'm like, yeah, it's amazing, but there is no one in color. So we got into the discussion, like, why is that? Why do we have a game in 2015 that expects you to go on this journey where you're fighting dragons and ghouls and vampires, but you can't put one Latin person in there? No Chinese people? You, no black are people? You, are, you, are you hearing us? Wicker the game? We're, we're talking to you right now. It, it's just a question. I mean, your game's gorgeous. Do not get me wrong. It's beautiful gameplay, great story, but it's just something we asked, and then it trickled down to Fallout 4. The new Fallout 4 trailer came out again. Another big budget game, amazing production, but the basis of this game is you get to create your own character. So there really isn't like an archetype for what the character looks like, but the trailer features a white male as the lead. But in the game, you can make anybody you want, so why was the trailer pitched that way? And not, not anything attacking, but it's just a question. It's like 2015. Let's switch it up. That, and, that, and we got in that... Um, our audience members got into it. Got into be a really passionate discussion, and it was nothing like, "Oh, well, shame on you" or anything like that. I just think um, some of these creators and some of these companies just get stuck in their ways, and it's, it's, it like it kind of falls to the side. It's like, "Oh, well, we just been doing this. We just been doing this. This is what we do." And it, it takes someone asking that question or a group of people saying, "Hey, well, why don't you switch it up like this?" to bring attention to it and maybe try to switch it up. Well, very nice, very nice. Well, where can people listen to the stuff? Uh, they can listen to stuff on SoundCloud and iTunes for free. We for free? Yeah. For free? For free. Well, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys interviewing me. No problem, no problem. From all of us here at Dice Squad, continuing our coverage here of Origins Game Fair 2015, this is Marshall Dice Knows Adam Campbell with... Mike Watson. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Heroes and Games. Heroes and Games. Go there. That's right. <laughs> uh.